here. We'll see. It should probably be KGB. Yo, is my camera crooked? There we go. You know what I'm saying? We battle another ratchet video. Before we get into the video, make sure you like, comment. Wait. No. Fuck. Yo. We should probably be KGB. Battle another ratchet video. Today we got the SpongeBob mop. The Sponge Boy mop doesn't exist. What the hell is a Sponge Boy, bro? I thought it said SpongeBob when I clicked on it. Oh, well, but before you get into the video, make sure you like, comment, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, bro. We're going to stay into this bitch. No cap, bro. Page 42 of the official hey, I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I'm in the mood to react today, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to do a bunch of reactions. You know what I'm saying? The longer reactions, you know what I'm saying? You guys know sometimes I'll be slacking just doing the two, three minute uh, videos, but I'm in the mood today. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but you know what I'm saying? I just randomly on there, bro. Let me get into this bitch, though. Author David Fane writes, SpongeBob was originally named SpongeBoy, but Sponge someone was Bar, already okay. using that name, so the Y became a B. Published just one year after the cartoon's 1999 debut on Nickelodeon, this is the earliest public acknowledgement of SpongeBob's original name. And it wouldn't take long for Scholastic Book Fair goers to start asking, who is this someone the book mentions? Who is the original SpongeBoy? A quick Google search may lead you to believe Nickelodeon changed the name after discovering SpongeBoy was being used by a mop company. This quote-unquote fact is everywhere. Blogs, books, biographies, brand accounts. It's shared so much because it's a fun little story. But much like Mr. Squarepants, this story has holes. Dive deep enough and you'll discover some nautical nonsense. There is no SpongeBoy mop. No trademarks, no copyrights, no patents, nothing. So strap in and set your belts to Wumbo as we explore the mop urban legend and uncover the true what? identity of the original SpongeBob. Bro, I'm thinking this some SpongeBob I shit to fuck. I gave my destiny. <laughs> and make sure you get your drip link in the description. Get your chains, your, your, your jewelry, all that shit. As far back as 2003, people were questioning the SpongeBoy name change. Patent and trademark attorney Eric Heels was unable to find a U.S. federal trademark on SpongeBoy. And a foreign trademark preventing the green light doesn't make much sense. SpongeBob is still called SpongeBoy in some regions, like Iceland. It is? The only public U.S. copyright records for SpongeBoy were filed after the turn of the century. And when searching U.S. records for SpongeBoy, we get nothing but a few false positives. The Chore Boy Sponge is a handheld sponge that cleans hard to reach surfaces, not sponsored. I could see this being kind Looks of like a regular problem. sponge. Maybe. And some ads for the Chore Boy are written in such a way that they read Sponge Boy, kinda. Okay. So following that logic, this 1998 advertisement for a SpongeBob scrub sponge might have caused Nick to have yet another go at the name. Okay, we desperately need some context. Hmm. First off, we need to prove David Fane's claim that SpongeBob was originally named Sponge Boy. Well, for starters, he worked on the show season one, but we can do better. In 2002, the first SpongeBob DVD released, included as a bonus feature, was a behind the scenes featurette with writer and storyboard artist Jay Lender. In the very beginning, SpongeBob was called Sponge Boy, but I think they found I think out I heard this before too. was using the name. There was another character named Sponge Boy. So character, they had to okay. It to SpongeBob, and for about a minute and a half, everyone was very upset about that, and then they realized SpongeBob, SpongeBob is better. better. Yeah. So and a character, we'll keep that in mind. Why his tongue are like that, right? Any more proof that SpongeBob's original name was SpongeBoy, we can turn to creator Steven Hillenberg's original pitch bible. Completed in 1997, SpongeBoy Ahoy is what Hillenberg first presented to Nickelodeon when pitching what would ultimately become SpongeBob SquarePants. This book is drink, full of unseen artwork and prototype story ideas. It's well worth a read, linked in the description. You may have noticed none of these materials. Not linked in my description. Well, the mop story is viral, so let's check some websites. When discussing the mop, the SpongeBob fan wiki cites the Mental Floss article, 14 Things You May Not Have Known About SpongeBob SquarePants. Coming in at number two on the list, the mop fact is attributed to a 2009 blog post on Nidorama, which doesn't have any references. Not so neat. Elsewhere on the wiki, you can find the SpongeBoy mop sourced to Banks 2004, page 31. This refers to the book, Spongebob Exposed, The Insider's Guide to Spongebob Squarepants. This is not a good reference. The book flat out doesn't mention the mop. It simply reiterates what David Fane said in his trivia book. I also checked the 20th anniversary re-release just in case. Nothing. On the other hand, we have the Spongebob Squarepants Wikipedia article. It mentions the Spongeboy mop, referring to a 2006 interview with Tom Kenny, the voice of the titular character. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, originally SpongeBob, when we uh, started to do the seven-minute pilot way back in 1997, he was originally called SpongeBoy. After we had recorded the seven-minute pilot with SpongeBoy and everybody calling him SpongeBoy and uh, him referring to himself as SpongeBoy, the legal department found out that there was some kind of a product, like a mop or something, and they, they okay. had to change it. So SpongeBob was was kind of Steve's last-minute fix. Finally, something of substance, and from a primary source. But fan sites and forums were talking about the mop years prior to the interview. There's got to be something earlier. Newspaper archives. But how does he even know to like do all this research about this? In the context of a tangible product. In 1996, Tampa, Florida, saw the theatrical production Who Soaked SpongeBoy, a comedy for all ages. You'll be hard pressed to find a review, let alone a synopsis of this play. Time to break out. Old oh, reliable. The mystical mop is mentioned in the 2004 book, The Magic Behind the Voices, a who's who of cartoon voice actors. After they already recorded the pilots, the legal department discovered that there was a commonly sold floor mop of the same name, and the character was quickly rechristened with only a slight variation to have as little impact as possible on the production already in progress. Okay. That, text was that makes sense, actually. I was just switching to Y to a B. College, presented by Tom Kenny. Going back further to May 2002, and I believe I found the earliest recorded mention of the SpongeBoy mop. It comes from journalist Mark McGuire's press release for the then upcoming SpongeBob special, Party Pooper Pants. Party SpongeBob Pooper Pants, wow. It was changed before its July 1999 debut because there was a mop named SpongeBoy, is the top rated program among youths for Nickelodeon. If a household cleaning product can become a TV star, then raccoon coats can certainly make a comeback. The press release is an interview. The fuck? With you guessed it, Tom Kenny, the only consistency in this tangled situation. If anyone would have more information on the mop, it would be Kenny. Unfortunately, asking the celebrity about a 25-year-old cleaning product is no easy task. No surprises there. While I couldn't get a response from Kenny, I got the next best thing. Hey, I doubt it! Responses from several Season 1 crew members. These guys were working on the show back when it was still named Spongeboy Ahoy. They were Sponge Boy Ahoy? Some fun That's what it was called? Or not a what the fuck? The That's lost to That's just fucking ass. I want to unwrap this. Show me something beautiful. Oh, we got an epic baby. That's cool, man. Next. Enter Eric Weiss. Eric worked on the first five seasons of SpongeBob SquarePants, and the information he provided blew my findings out of the water. I don't think it was a mop, but I'm not positive about that. Whenever it was, the legal team didn't want to take any chances. It was on the East Coast somewhere. Interesting. Anyway, I distinctly remember the conversation when the legal department told me. Steve Hillenberg and Derek Dryman invited me to the editing room to see the latest animation. It wasn't until I saw the name tag shot where it says, Employee SpongeBob. That's when I asked about the name change, and that's when Steve and Derek told me. It was meant to be. It's so much funnier. First off, thank you, Mr. Weiss. Second, wow, okay, that's a lot. To so now he's saying it's not a mop. Show the power of asking questions. With this fresh perspective and some new terms to Google, like East Coast, I was able to crack the case surprisingly quickly. After a few misleads, like this sponge boy nail file being resold by East Coast Bargains. Okay. But with only a finite number of links to click, it was only a matter of time until I stumbled upon the real sponge boy. Now, I want to give Tom Kenny and any others the benefit of the doubt. I don't think the mop rhetoric was spread with ill intentions. Yeah, they probably it up as I don't know. Wait, hold on. Department red herring, or just an easier to explain story. Because the original Sponge Boy was not a mop. What was it? It was not a cleaning product. The fuck was it, it then? It was a pencil. Oh, what the fuck? A Sponge Boy pencil. New Jersey based pencil manufacturer Pentec launched a series of pencils called Cool Art. The goal okay. create something trendy. Coordinated by legendary illustrator Lou Brooks, over a dozen artists were brought on board to design 18 products. The okay. eleventh Cool Art pencil was entitled Sponge Boy. Ah, okay. Depicts cartoonist Kevin Pope's original character about to jump into a pool. One can only imagine the hijinks the swimmers are about. Hey, hey, wait a second. We've seen this before. Yeah. Debuting in a newspaper comic back in 1987, Kevin Pope SpongeBoy is, with near certainty, the reason SpongeBob's name is what we know it as today. 
While this Sponge Boy wasn't trademarked, Cool Art was, and one can see why the Nickelodeon legal team wouldn't want to. Take yeah, they just don't want to take it. Yeah, makes sense. This was a real product. Makes with sense. A real barcode sold in real stores. Looks like raccoon cones yeah. are not making a comeback. Wow. All right. To conclude this little mystery, Noodle Bob I wanted to get my hands on a Sponge Boy pencil. For it what? Just wasn't happening. These things are hard to come by. However, I mean, I, I guess. Cool Art number six, illustrated by John Sales. So, Neat Leadhead, a distant cousin of Kevin Pope's Sponge Boy. After the cool art line of products, Pentec would have a few more good gears, securing sports contracts with the NBA, NFL, okay. and NHL. That's good. Eventually, profits would suffer, and Pentec would be acquired by Jack Pacific in 2000. They're still around in some capacity today, even coming full circle, or square, releasing official SpongeBob's. Oh, uh, shit, that's crazy. The Pentec Sponge Boy wasn't the only Sponge Boy around in the Oh, there's America. more? What the fuck? There was an experimental musician called Sponge Boy who would later go on to form Handsome Rodney, an art rock and noise band. According to Eric Weiss, the Sponge Boy musician was another reason the Nickelodeon legal department was apprehensive about using the Sponge Boy name. But perhaps most notably, and most often cited alongside the mop, there's the Flaming Carrot. A superhero created by Bob Burden in 1979, having read 5,000 comics in a wow. single sitting to win a bet, a poor man the suffered a flaming carrot bro. into the flaming carrot. This superhero was Burden's blue-collar response to the elitist, perfection-oriented superheroes of the time. The flaming carrot is mediocre. The flaming carrot is a carrot. One of the superhero's best friends is named Sponge Boy. Hi, how are you? Sponge Boy made his debut in the 1984 Anaglyph 3D comic, The Bandit Moons. My copy didn't come with the 3D glasses. Luckily, I had my Spy Kids pair oddly close. Oh no, they're back again! Get undercover! Quack, quack. <gasps> the, the sky, sky hook. hook! Run for it, Sponge Boy! No, no, Yo, no. what the fuck? They got Sponge Boy! I'm coming, Sponge Boy! Niggas used to make a uh, comic out of anything. A motherfucker made a carrot and a sponge, bro. Carrot, yeah. They got him on his birthday too. What did I tell you about those hooks, boy? We wouldn't hear from oh, the sponge shit. boy for three more years in a crossover featuring the flaming carrot and another famous satirical comic, Cerebus the Aardvark. In this flame, uh, the aardvark. The two find themselves what the in a fuck? tall, dark tower. The only light source is the carrot's flaming head. And now, from the abridged reading of Cerebus 104, this flame, this carrot. You're here. You see this product? This product is paying me over $15,000 every single month. This is a much better... Anyways. Here, we must hurry now. It's a long way to the top. How far is it? About 230,000 miles. What? It's okay. We'll take the shortcut. Shortcut? What kind of a... Shh. <sighs> How did you get up here? Let's just say I get around. Onward! The fuck? Oh, whoa, look. Cerebus doesn't know who you are. Cerebus doesn't know what you're doing in the Black Tower. Tower? I thought it was a department store. Huh? Cerebus doesn't care. The fuck is going on? Cerebus doesn't care what you're doing in the Black Tower, and Cerebus can't see a reason Cerebus would need your help. So, hey, hey, ah, uh, uh. Now you tell me which way is top and which way is bottom. Why is it the head of a carrot, bro? This shit is crazy. Follow closely. Now who the hell is Skipper and Gilligan? So where's this darn shortcut you keep talking about? We will know it when we see it. We must not be fooled by side tunnels pretending to be shortcuts. They are roads to nowhere. How can you tell the difference? There is only one way to... Wee! Look, it's Sponge Boy. Sponge Boy? Sponge Boy here was kidnapped on his birthday by the Bandit Moons. What were you saying about the shortcut? Aside from the Bandit Moons, how was your birthday? It was a most peculiar Yo, what and incredible the adventure. fuck am I watching right now? Tunnels. Uh, feel that? <sighs> we must hold tight now. Ah! Told you so. I have to take Sponge Boy back down. He is too young to return by himself. What about the... Wait! Hold tight, Sponge Boy. 
Wait, what about the shortcut? That's Bird fucking tough. Boy would later appear alongside Bill Clinton in 1997's annual number one. This was released around the time of the SpongeBob name change, though Eric Weiss did not recall the flaming carrot coming up in conversation. Bird and Sponge Boy would make his final appearance in 2004. In a scene too bizarre and amazing to spoil, a photorealistic Sponge Boy and flaming carrot cross. That's creepy. You can find claims online that Nickelodeon chose Sponge Bob to pay tribute to Bob Bird and Sponge Boy, but that's a load of barnacles. Steven Hillenberg conceptualized Bob the Sponge in his educational comic The Inner Tidal Zone back in 1984 when he was a marine biologist. Originally, he was named Sponge Boy. You know, you take an inanimate object like Apple and you put the word boy on it, Apple Boy, and it becomes alive. But Sponge Boy was trademarked by someone, so I decided on an alternate, Sponge Bob, like Billy Bob. I thought it was important to have his first name be Sponge, so that when you looked at him, you would not think, cheese, man. Ain't no fucking way, what the fuck? The children's TV series has continuously embraced the character's roots as Sponge Boy over the past two and a half decades. There's Mr. Krabs' famous line, SpongeBoy is the name of the official SpongeBob title card font, and you can even spot a picture of Hillenberg's original SpongeBoy in the third SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. If you want to try your hand at locating the SpongeBoy pencil or just discuss the mop situation in general, I've linked a lost media wiki thread in the description. Hey, bro, that seems to be it. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of SpongeBoy, nigga.